Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We've got a lot to be talking about today. We're going to start things off with some rainfall over New South Wales, Queensland and a little bit into Victoria as well. We'll talk about some cold weather happening down there too. We've got some heavy rainfall inbound for far north Queensland. We'll talk about some showers and storms expected over in Western Australia. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off over in New South Wales in that general area. You can see this big mass of clouds streaming into the state right now and it is bringing some light to moderate rainfall across a lot of the central interior parts of New South Wales extending up into northern uh, New South Wales and into the southern reaches of Queensland. You can see it better here with the satellite imagery. There is a lot of cloud activity streaming into the state. It is most densely concentrated across I guess the majority of New South Wales but over in the a uh, sort of central southeastern corner of the state around sort of orange that sort of area over the top of Canberra and these uh, cloud tops are reasonably thick and they're going to be uh, blocking out a lot of that uh, precious sunlight today uh, and dumping a little bit of rainfall as well we're going to be talking about up to 10 millimeters of rainfall throughout the course of today negligible amounts for some locations but a decent amount is expected out in some locations so outside of Tibura uh, that sort of area we are looking at some heavier falls especially into the nor northern and the northeastern parts of the state later on in tonight and you can see it here on the rainfall forecast later on tonight, we're looking at rainfall accumulations up to about 15 millimetres every three hours. Again, nothing heavy here, but just considering how big this band of rainfall that's expected to be moving in is, uh, you could be expecting some decent accumulations out of that. A couple of hours worth of that rainfall will add up to 15, 20, maybe even 25 millimetres for one or two locations. The rainfall should clear out of New South Wales by early Tuesday morning, contracting to the northeastern part of the state by around Tuesday afternoon, and then completely clearing out of the state by around Tuesday evening you can actually see a little bit of rainfall does pipe up in the evening hours. I do feel like there is a chance of maybe the odd thunderstorm here and there throughout the course of today, especially into the northern parts of New South Wales around Lightning Ridge and Moree. I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of bolts of lightning were reported out there. But then again, I don't think the lightning is going to be widespread. It certainly won't be in sort of a thunderstorm fashion, either a big widespread thunderstorm bad. Uh, for those in the southern part of New South Wales, around Mildura in Victoria and then into Albury on the uh, border of Victoria and New South Wales as well, but for those locations outside of Griffith and Wagga Wagga, for example, uh, the rainfall should be easing off over the coming couple of hours and you'll be able to tell it is really light right now and, to be honest, more annoying than anything. There are a few showers expected into Victoria, but again, the rainfall remaining really light throughout the course of today. A little bit of snow is expected on the high peaks around Threadbow and then into New South Wales. I think the snowfall accumulations will be negligible, in fact, close to zero and I think Victoria will completely miss out on any snow flurries uh, to kind of say the least there so it really isn't a weather event worth worrying about but it is just a bit of a weather forecast here that we are expecting rather unpleasant conditions across quite a big percentage of New South Wales. Sydney is expecting a little bit of rainfall later on today and into early tomorrow morning again the rainfall shouldn't be too heavy and it should be contracting to the eastern and the northern suburbs by early Tuesday morning before easing out at around lunchtime uh, and again the rainfall not heavy at all there and you can see rainfall the accumulations over the coming three days as a result of this entire weather system. For about 75% of the area that's expected to be impacted by rainfall, it should be below 5 millimetres and a very hit and miss 5 to 10 millimetres at that. Uh, areas out in Victoria, um, Mildura expecting a couple of millimetres of rainfall, Broken Hill another 4 or 5 millimetres today. The majority of that has already fallen as well, I might um, also add. But you can see rainfall accumulations in the northern parts of New South Wales, outside of Tamworth and Armidale and Glen Innes up in the northern mountains of uh, northeastern New South Wales. Wales. You can see accumulations are up towards 35 to 40 millimetres for some of these places, so some decent rainfall is expected out there, and there will certainly be some welcome rainfall for farmers and agricultural communities, which would definitely welcome 40 millimetres of steady rainfall that's not going to come in a downpour from a bunch of the severe thunderstorms. So certainly some fantastic news on the weather forecast up there, that is for sure. I did also say that we're going to be touching on the temperatures for New South Wales. We'll get to that one right now. It was a cool morning again for some of the mountainous areas, especially uh, in New South Wales and Victoria, certainly below zero once again. I mean, that is every night for them. We are also expecting a couple of cool mornings uh, through the early and the middle parts of this week. You can see tomorrow morning expecting temperatures to go down towards zero. It's only going to be a couple of degrees above zero for a large swathe of New South Wales and Victoria, kind of contracted closest to the border. You can see here that's where the uh, coldest of temperatures are, Albury 
Mercury going down to three degrees, but areas outside of it in the foothills of the Great Dividing Range going down towards uh, one or even zero. Again, not expecting major frost uh, from this weather event here. It's certainly not cold enough for that, but just a heads up, it is going to be rather chilly under the influence from this high pressure system and frosts from weather events like this are pretty much a given. So farmers out there, just make sure you are prepared for some colder than average temperatures, but they're not going to be too far below the average, only three or four degrees. But yeah, just a heads up that it is going to be a little bit chilly Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday mornings before warming up again in the wake of a uh, co uh, cold front that's going to be sweeping through the southern states on Friday. It'll be a little bit warmer then, but we will keep you posted on this weather forecast. And if it does change and the cold does get a little bit more intense, then you know that this will be the place to find that information as soon as possible. We're going to move up into Queensland now and talk about something less cold and a lot more tropical. And you can see it right now in terms of 10 day rainfall accumulations looking very healthy across quite a large swathe of the coastal parts of Queensland, bar sort of that Bowen area. Uh, but there are some good rainfall accumulations. I'm going to break them down for you right now. You can see it uh, from today, actually, the rain uh, radar here. There are a couple of showers streaming into the Whitsundays at this time. Mackay's had a couple of millimetres overnight, and locations around uh, Bowen have also had a couple of millimetres overnight. And areas up in far north Queensland have also had up to 20 millimetres over the past 24 hours. So some decent rainfall has been reported up there. Uh, and you can see it here on the rain forecast here. There are a couple of showers around. They're not going to be uh, too impactful in terms of rainfall. Only a couple of millimetres are expected, and as you know in Queensland, that is not enough rainfall to do any kind of damage at all. The rainfall will ease off temporarily on Tuesday before picking up again in what could be a little bit of a thunderstorm event in the central Queensland districts outside of Ogmore, Bundaberg, Gladstone, that sort of area. We could be seeing a couple of thunderstorms there on Wednesday afternoon, so I'm going to keep you posted on those. They look like non-severe thunderstorms, but again, we will just keep an eye on what could be a little bit of a pulse thunderstorm outbreak Wednesday night. Again, uh, certainly something worth watching. And it is getting to that time of the year. Early September is when we do start to see some storms fire up in this part of Queensland. They're still few and far between and as rare as hen's teeth until about October. Uh, but we still do see a couple of thunderstorms here and there at this time of the year. It's not totally unusual right now. The rainfall does continue for parts of far north Queensland until about Sunday when it really does start to pipe up quite seriously. And you can see rainfall streaming in across a lot of the Queensland coastline, including areas as far south as Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Sunday night looks like they could be in for up to 25 millimetres of rainfall from from some heavy showers that will just be streaming ashore quite consistently and steadily up there, all powered by a low pressure trough that's going to be extending up the uh, Queensland coastline and a high pressure system that's driving in a nice juicy onshore flow from the Coral Sea, uh, the high pressure system being located in the Tasman Sea. You can see some heavy falls expected outside of far north Queensland. You're looking at uh, thunderstorms bringing up to 20 millimetres an hour up there at some parts on Sunday night. Certainly some heavy falls expected and forecast up there. I do believe that we're going to be waking up Monday morning to accumulations up to 50 millimetres for some locations around Innisfail and Belendon Kerr, the wettest places in Australia. I would not be surprised if we did see some very heavy rainfall there. Um, the, the rainfall for far north Queensland itself kind of eases up Monday night into early Tuesday morning. It still sticks around, but you can see this low pressure system in the Coral Sea here. Don't be fooled, this is not a tropical lawn. Certainly nothing that we need to be worrying about in terms of tropical cyclone activity, but it is a nice trough line that's going to be driving through a nice amount of rainfall uh, into the Coral Sea, which could collide with the Queensland coastline early next week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and provide some much needed rainfall to central and southern parts of Queensland. Far North Queensland doesn't actually get the most amount of rainfall out of this weather event. The bulk of the rainfall does remain, I guess, offshore, but you can still see some decent accumulations from the rainfall Sunday night outside of Brisbane with totals up to 100 millimetres expected, and then onto the Gold Coast for areas around Coomera, and even up towards Redcliffe, you can see accumulations between 40 and 80 millimetres possible there Sunday night. So again, we will keep a very close eye on the forecast for that because that does look like some decent rainfall there. Uh, from thunderstorms outside of Rockhampton and Gladstone and that sort of area, expecting potentially up to 20 to 30 millimetres from them on, I believe I said Wednesday or Thursday night. I think it was Wednesday night. Again, I will be keeping you posted on those, so stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already to get the latest information on those thunderstorms. You can see storms also extending up towards Mackay with 25 millimetres expected out on the mountains outside of uh, Mackay up there. And far north Queensland, once again, taking the cake for the most amount of rainfall 
pretty much anywhere in Australia over the next 10 days, but you can see accumulations have been backed off slightly from yesterday. Still a very healthy 150 millimetres or so for parts of the Cassowary Coast outside of Babinda and Innisfail, and some decent accumulations as well up into the Daintree Rainforest, about 130 millimetres expected there. Now I say basically every video we talk about rainfall in far north Queensland, these accumulations can blow out dramatically, and when you've got 130 millimetres on the forecast, that can turn into 500 millimetres for a week. It does happen. Again, I'm absolutely Absolutely for not a second saying that that could happen, but we will just keep a very close eye on rainfall and take it as it comes because it certainly does look like we're in for a little bit of heavy rainfall at some point later on next weekend. I do believe it will be coming through Sunday and into early Monday morning, but certainly something we need to keep a very close eye on and very close tabs on to monitor the flooding situation up in Queensland because certainly this amount of rainfall can cause rivers to flow and any more rainfall on top of this can bring rivers up to the minor or moderate flooding alerts up in far north Queensland. Uh, some decent rainfall as well well as expected uh, as you get further inland areas such as Ravenshorn, Atherton expecting up to 25 millimetres, some good rainfall there. Cairns kind of misses out to be honest, they're only expecting about 20 millimetres of rainfall over the next 10 days and again that could be very hit and miss for some locations. Townsville Rain Dome in full effect, you can see they're hardly expecting any rainfall and just north of them they're looking at much more rainfall. Uh, so interesting there that Townsville again misses out on the rainfall. Inland out towards Mount Carbone the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss but still a little bit of drizzle expected out there. Uh, and all in all looks like a pretty good rainfall forecast for this location up in far north Queensland uh, got some widespread decent accumulations across the majority of Qu of the Queensland coastline so again this does look like a pretty healthy week for rainfall we're just going to keep a very close eye on thunderstorms and some heavy rainfall up in far north Queensland now I'm going to switch it up again and not talk about the tropical and move down to southwest and western Australia where we do have some rainfall on the cards pretty soon for some locations. You can see three day rainfall accumulations, give it away. A cold front is expected to come through sometime Tuesday morning for the Perth metro area but you can already start to see it building off the southwestern corner right now with a few showers uh, currently streaming in uh, down on the south coastal regions and a few showers currently streaming in from a line between Rottnest Island down towards Mantra for the Perth coastal region so some good rainfall is possible throughout the course of today. Again, I think it will be light to moderate throughout a lot of these locations, but this cold front, as it does build, is likely to dump quite a good amount of rainfall for some locations, and I'll break that down for you right now. You can see as this cold front does sweep up from the south, the rainfall is really slow moving in terms of a forward motion, and we're just expecting a line of showers to be streaming in. They could last potentially up to 12 hours for some of these locations. Now, none of these showers are expected to be particularly heavy, but when you're talking about light to moderate rainfall sustaining itself for up to 12 hours at a time, the Rainfall accumulations will blow out and you can be expecting some accumulations up to 40 millimetres for areas around yelling up Margaret River and down towards the Capes of Augusta uh, and Cape Lewin. Uh, some good rainfall as well is expected to penetrate inland out towards the Vass region and even as far inland as Pemberton and Walpole. Some decent rainfall is expected out there and a few thunderstorms as well are possible from this weather event. Like I said, none of the rainfall is expected to be particularly heavy at one particular moment, but we are still expecting some accumulations to start adding up for some of these areas. Now Tuesday is when this front is going to get itself together and you can see it again sweeping into the southwest capes, potentially dumping another 20 millimetres after lunchtime on Tuesday tomorrow, and then moving into the Perth metro area later Tuesday afternoon at around 5 or 6 p.m. So make sure you do take care on those roads in the evening, especially if you're in the southern suburbs. That does look like where the bulk of the rainfall is going to be. Before the rain and the showers pick up later on Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning, we're up to 20 millimetres is expected for the Perth metro area. I do believe the majority of the rainfall will be concentrated to the eastern and the southeastern suburbs, but there will still be a good drop so, uh, across the our main metro area and even into the northern suburbs as well, which have as well, which have missed out on the rainfall so far uh, over the last couple of weeks from the last few fronts that have came through. The rainfall also expected to do a good job at making an inland to some locations out towards York and Northam. However, it doesn't look like the rainfall is going to be too flash for the remainder of the wheat belt. Once it gets towards Southwestern Highway, I think the rainfall will completely cut itself off uh, and locations will be very lucky to get more than 10 or 15 millimetres. And then the cold front dies off Wednesday afternoon as a, another weak system sweeps up from the south and brings some more showers and the isolated thunderstorm to the south coastal region on Wednesday night. And again, rainfall continuing on Wednesday into the Perth metro area, easing off early Thursday morning before we get a return to the cool, calm and dry conditions that we have had this weekend so far. And you can see them uh, persisting right through Saturday and into uh, the early parts of next weekend, Sunday. You can see the rainfall does pipe up again for the southwest with another big cold front moving through here. Again, I don't think this one's going to be too extreme in terms of how much rainfall it brings. It really doesn't look like a wet 
cold front, to be honest. But we could still be seeing another 20 millimeter sweep through on uh, Sunday morning for the Perth metro area and some bigger accumulations for some of the southwestern uh, corners as well, up to 30 or 40 millimeters expected there. And we'll just break down rainfall accumulations quickly over the next three days from that steady flow of rainfall coming through, most of it coming through today and tomorrow for the southwest capes, up to 70 millimeters expected for some of these locations. Now, I do believe that that number is a very bullish accumulation, but I would not be surprised if some of the uh, portable weather stations or even some of the main weather stations picked up up to 70 millimeters of rainfall across the southwest capes. My number has been 40 to 50 millimeters this weather system for a couple of days now, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of those accumulations did blow out. So keep me posted in the comment section about how much rainfall you get. Some decent rainfall as well up towards Perth. Like I said, the eastern suburbs copping the most up to 30 millimeters of the stuff, maybe even more for one or two places. But again, the Perth metro area picking up a healthy 20 millimeters and some of the northern suburbs as well picking up some decent rainfall as well, 20 to 30 millimeters there. But yeah, you can see the wheat belt does get a little bit of a harder deck of cards to play. Only a couple of millimeters expected out there. Uh, York and Northern still do pick up a healthy handful of rainfall by the looks of it. But once you get into the uh, central and the eastern parts of the wheat belt, the rainfall completely falls off a cliff by the looks of things. 10-day accumulations, though, really do have a big jump across a lot of the wheat belt, and that is from that cold front coming through later on this coming weekend, Sunday, and into Monday. This big cold front does dump a good amount of rainfall across the southwest and even into the central west as well, north of Perth and as far north as Geraldton and Calvary, receiving some decent accumulations there. Again, this just looks like a big strip of light to moderate rainfall that's going to be streaming through, and it's not going to equate to too much rainfall, but we could be seeing up towards 20 millimetres for one or two locations, and peak accumulations across the southwest up to 40 millimetres, I'll keep you posted on this cold front closer to the date. I just want to get through the current cold front, uh, especially considering this cold front still has a relatively uncertain forecast. But unfortunately for those that have been enjoying the sunshine over the last couple of days, it looks like it's going to be an end to it with more cold fronts sweeping up from the south next Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the 12th, 13th and 14th of August respectively. It looks like until this high pressure system gets itself in later on next fortnight, we're going to be in for a little bit of winter weather. This is a big high pressure system, by the way. Uh, but it looks like we're going to be getting another taste of winter later on this weekend and into early next week so I will keep you very uh, much posted and up to date on these weather systems again that is a very detailed forecast update for Australia if I have left anything unanswered please do let me know in the comment section down below I look forward to getting through as many comments as I can today thank you so much for watching the video to this point your support lately has been greatly appreciated we are closing in on 17,000 subscribers so please do consider subscribing so we can hit that number today uh, thank you to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them so again their support is great greatly appreciated and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.